Renault has reinvented its fifth generation Clio and now wants you to consider it in this frugal full hybrid e-tech guise. A far-reaching visual makeover is complemented by a higher quality cabin and there are sporting Alpine themed touches for the plushest version. If your next Super Mini needs to be electrified but you're not quite ready for a full EV, this Gallic contender is worth a look. Renault used to be synonymous with Super Minis, first in the 70s with the Renault 5, then in more recent decades with the Clio. Here we're going to look at the way that the fifth generation Clio is reinventing itself in hybrid only form. The Clio used to be a mainstream seller in our market and in others. Over 16 million of them have been sold worldwide since this model line's original introduction back in 1990, with over 1.1 million of those cars finding homes in the UK. But in more recent years, it's become a more marginal player in the Super Mini segment, particularly since the introduction of the current fifth generation BF series design back in 2019. And that's a trend likely to continue now that Renault has placed such an emphasis on its more expensive e-tech hybrid technology as part of this Mark V model's far-reaching mid-term update. That's what we're focusing on here, though you can still get a Clio with the brand's more familiar three-cylinder TCE90 petrol unit. The company's UK strategy going forward is clearly to increase per unit profits stripping out from its various lineups, variants that don't really make much money and focusing on models that customers are quite happy to pay a little bit of a premium for. The Clio E-Tech full hybrid might certainly be a super mini you could feel that way about. We were impressed by this powertrain at its original introduction back in 2020, a great Clio combination of frugality and day-to-day -day drivability. Since then, the same powertrain's also been adopted by another Renault Group model, the Dacia Jogger. With this updated Mark V Clio though, this innovative electrified engine has been matched by far more appealing packaging, particularly in the case of the Alpine trimmed variant we're testing here. With the Clio in this updated form, Renault thinks it can tap into quite a large audience of people who still want a small car but remain understandably undecided about switching to a full EV. But just how seriously should you take this Clio, particularly in this e-tech form where it's pitched against more established full hybrid direct super mini segment rivals like the Toyota Yaris and the Honda Jazz. You'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. So what's a Clio E-Tech hybrid like? Well, there's an automatic gearbox, of course. It's a hybrid, so you have to have that. But there are no weird controls or confusing buttons to press. Get behind the wheel and there's a futuristic dawn of day style graphic on the instrument screen in front of you, which then populates with two virtual dials when you press the fascia start button before the right-hand gauge shows a green ready message, signalling the powertrain's readiness to go. You might find it a little strange that all of this happens in silence. This model usually fires up solely on electric power and will stay that way until you exceed 10 miles an hour. It's all quite impressive, though if you really don't want to have to find the considerable premium of around £3,500 that Renault wants for its hybrid tech, or your limited annual mileage doesn't justify it, then the French brand will continue to sell you this car, fitted out with the old, more conventional three-cylinder TCE90 petrol engine. Here though, our focus is on the e-tech hybrid you'd ideally want. Once you get going in one of these, the petrol engine inevitably chips in, but in the course of give and take suburban driving, the car is capable of intermittently running for short periods solely in all electric form. In fact, Renault claims that in urban driving, that's what happens 80% of the time here. 
which is what differentiates this car's full hybrid powertrain from that of the mild hybrid models that some other super mini brands want to sell you. You can't plug this powertrain in as you can in the top e-tech version of this Clio's crossover showroom stable bay, the Capture. Renault thinks super mini folk won't want the weight of the price tag associated with that kind of setup. Instead, the objective here is to address the full hybrid formula, championed very profitably in this segment over the last decade by Toyota's Yaris. This engine is unchanged from the form in which we first tried it in this Clio back in 2020, and Renault continues to make much of the way this power plant's design borrows from its F1 racing technology. We've heard this sort of thing before from manufacturers in motorsport, but here it happens to be true. A modern hybrid F1 engine is extremely compact and uses two electric motors, one recovering heat waste, the other recycling kinetic energy from braking, which charge the battery and provide power boosts. These are mated to a multi-mode clutchless dog gearbox, an auto transmission so named because of the long dog ear shaped teeth that ring each of its cogs and can tolerate rapid violent shifts. This Clio uses exactly the same tech but with a focus on efficiency rather than outright power. The engine is so compact that Renault's been able to package two electric motors alongside it beneath the bonnet. One of these sits on top of the gearbox, puts out 20 horsepower, acts as a high voltage generator and is tasked with starting the car and smoothing its gear changes. Most of the work in assisting the engine though is done by a second bigger motor that's attached to the rear of the transmission casing, puts out 48 horsepower and is there to help the combustion power plant propel the car once it's underway. Both motors are powered by a tiny 1.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack located beneath the boot floor and the whole powertrain's mated to an auto gearbox of the race style clutchless dog variety we just mentioned. The total system output here is rather different to an Alpine F1 race car of course, instead of around 850 brake horsepower, think 145. But the whole setup proves in the clearest possible way that race tech really can be translated into sensible road car technology if you try hard enough with it. So how does it all work in practice? Well, the straightforward performance stats, 62 miles an hour from rest in 9.3 seconds en route to 112 miles an hour maximum, don't give you much idea of just how lively this electrified Clio actually feels in day-to-day -day driving. Its enthusiastic Gallic vibe comes courtesy of this powertrain's generous reserves of mid-range pulling power. The petrol engine musters 144 newton meters of it, whilst the bigger electric motor generates 205 newton meters, and the smaller high voltage starter generator motor delivers an additional 50. The result is excellent acceleration, especially at speeds between 50 and 75 miles an hour, where the battery assists with sharper responses than a conventional petrol or diesel engine could offer, enabling a 50 to 75 mile an hour time of just 6.9 seconds. For this kind of enthusiastic progress, you're going to need to select the most dynamic of the three drive modes on offer, Sport, but you're not going to want to use that too often for fear of decimating the frugal fuel returns, which would have prompted you to choose this car in the first place. For that, you'll most of the time want to stay in my sense, a hybrid setting which blends the petrol and electric motor output for maximum economy or possibly in the eco setting, which uses a more measured mapping of the accelerator pedal and adapted gear changing for greater economy. In town, you might want to select EV, which prioritizes battery electric drive up to about 27 miles an hour, providing there's sufficient charge. And there's also a further brake setting on the gear lever, which increases throttle liftoff electrical regeneration, though not to the point where lifting your right foot results in the kind of abrupt retardation you'd find in an EV. For moments when you might need a sudden burst of acceleration, the throttle has a kickdown function which brings all the power sources into play, suspending the EV mode should it have been selected. Efficiency though is this car's primary purpose and drive satisfaction here lies not with hurling the thing about, but staying within the sweet spot of the complicated powertrain's capabilities.
there's certainly a lot going on, as you'll gather, if you can be bothered to keep an eye on the instrument panel's selectable energy monitor display, a triangulation of battery, e-motor and engine, which shows the hyperactive system's flow of energy. One moment the engine could be powering the wheels via the fixed ratio gearbox, then the main e-motor might take over, then both might work in tandem, then you might relax the accelerator and find all of a sudden that energy is being harvested. It's quite satisfying to interact with all of this by keeping the digital power meter in blue for regen braking or green for eco or electric driving and seeing the EV light flicker on and off as battery power eases in and out of the process. If you're testing this car, having tried its two main full hybrid super mini rivals, the Honda Jazz and the Toyota Yaris, which would be sensible, you won't find it any more fun to drive, which given this model line's Renault Sport history and the liberally applied Alpine badges of this top spec test car might come as something of a disappointment. The main thing you'll notice with this Clio compared to those two competitors is that its auto gearbox feels far more responsive, lacking the rubber band style lag that still characterises the belt driven CVT auto transmissions that those two Japanese contenders have to have. Otherwise the drive experience here is just as in any other Clio, so the ride is relaxed and generally comfy, the steering light and pretty effortless. In fact, if no one briefed you on the extent of the complex technology in play here, you'd probably never guess it, which is what's so impressive about this car. Familiar packaging, clothing a general level of sophistication far beyond anything you might ever have expected to find in a Super Mini, especially perhaps a European Super Mini. But times are changing and this car proves that Renault, more quickly than some of its volume rivals, is changing with them. With the original version of this Mark V Clio, you had the feel of newfangled technology paired with previous combustion era design. But things are a bit different now thanks to EV design elements borrowed from the Megane E-Tech and the Scenic Vision concept car. Not much, mind you, is different from the side. The total body length of just over four meters is pretty typical for a car in this segment. But stylist Laurent Van Den Acker has added plenty of neat touches, like the way that the gloss black rear door handles are rather artfully hidden in the C-pillar, giving the silhouette a sportier three-door look. Wheel rim sizes see 16-inch alloys fitted to the base model with smarter 17 inches on upper trim variants like this one. This top Esprit Alpine spec gets you blue detailing on these alloys and an Alpine badge above the front wheel arch. The big visual changes with this mid-term update come here at the front. The aforementioned styling chief particularly likes the eyes of this revised Mark V Clio, slim LED headlamps with the brand's latest new wave light signature, each unit incorporating up to five beams. The old car had three. The nose also gets a brushed satin chrome Nouvelle R Renault logo. Plus there's an enlarged checkered grille, a sharper bumper design, and outer air curtain slots to improve the aerodynamics. This top Esprit Alpine trim level includes this matte shadow gray lower aerofoil blade that's supposed to give a motorsport vibe. As for rear changes, well, you might notice these restyled clear lens tail lamps and the new brand badge that sits between them. Otherwise, things are much as before. A long, thin brake light is fitted at the top of the tailgate glass. You get a shark fin roof antenna and there's an E-Tech badge on the boot lid. But of course, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. This Mark V model's stiff, sophisticated CMFB or common module family B-segment chassis structure fashioned from high elastic limit steel and designed from the outset to accommodate this electrified drivetrain. Time to take a look up front.
It's not so different inside because Renault spent quite a lot upgrading this Mark V model's cabin at its original launch back in 2019. But nevertheless, detail changes have been made. Across the range, nicer materials now feature around the interior with more soft touch surfaces around the dash and doors and a smarter steering wheel with the brand's latest Nouvelle R logo. These supportive enveloping seats are a high point, now offering a longer cushion base along with a more enveloping shape. Analog dials have been dispensed with in the colourful instrument binnacle. The display, for which usually 7 inches in size, is upgraded to a new 10-inch edgeless setup with this Esprit Alpine trim level, the largest in the segment. This portrait-orientated centre dash Easy Link infotainment screen also changes in size according to trim, usually 7 inches, but upgraded to 9.3 inches with this Esprit Alpine variant. This larger monitor adds the finishing touch to what Renault's tried to do here, feeling satisfyingly sophisticated as you poke, pinch and swipe your way through the menus. These days, its advances in quality doesn't seem so eye-catching, but if you can stretch to this top Esprit Alpine trim level, there's certainly a pleasantly plush, sporty vibe. Across the range, nicer materials now feature around this interior, with more soft-touch surfaces around the dash and doors, and a smarter steering wheel with the brand's latest Nouvelle R logo. There's even a slightly... Audi-esque feel, which you notice particularly with this fascia-wide ventilation strake and the circular ventilation dials that sit midway down the centre stack. Even at this priciest end of the lineup, leather isn't now used anywhere with sustainable alternatives employed instead. And talking of upholstery, these supportive enveloping seats are a high point, now offering a longer cushion base along with a more enveloping shape. The fascia is nicely upholstered too, and on this model includes a little French flag on the passenger side, in case you'd forgotten this Renault's provenance. Because you have to have virtual dials with a Clio hybrid, analogue dials have been dispensed with in the colourful instrument binnacle. The display for which, usually 7 inches in size, is upgraded to a new 10-inch edgeless setup with this Esprit Alpine trim level, the largest in the segment. Both types of instrument screen are designed to change in shade and design layout, depending on your choice of multi-sense drive system setting. This larger TFT setup sees a left-hand speedometer and a right-hand power meter separated by a drive assist graphic, with the central space above occupied by your choice of selectable settings from the available car, music, nav and energy drive settings you access via these right-hand steering spoke buttons. This portrait-orientated centre dash Easy Link infotainment screen also changes in size, according to trim, usually 7 inches but upgraded to 9.3 inches with this variant. This larger monitor adds the finishing touch to what Renault's tried to do here, feeling satisfyingly sophisticated as you poke, pinch and swipe your way through the menus. There's a choice of a home screen divided into selectable segments here. For instance, we've got audio, phone and nav, or using this button along the screen's lower edge, you can have a display split into the usual icons, in this case for nav, radio, music, phone, apps and car info. The app section allows you to store personal pictures and video, and there's the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, plus a decent quality DAB audio system. Plusher models like this one also allow you to use this monitor to set various ambient lighting profiles. Choose from white, blue, green, red, purple, sky blue, yellow and orange shades that change the colour of the classy LED strips that feature around the gear lever and in the door pulls. What else? Well, build quality from the Turkish factory is OK, but the fit and finish don't quite have the feel of longevity that you get in this car's Japanese rivals. Cabin design ergonomics are generally pretty good, though you do get occasional screen reflections. And we prefer to have seen a proper knob for audio volume rather than these two fiddly screen buttons. Fortunately, there are more easily accessible volume controls on the steering column. To the left of that column still sits the starter, which once again, unfortunately, hasn't been moved to the right of it to suit our market. The brand hasn't followed its Stellantis Group rivals by adding in an optional head-up display, but everything you really need falls to hand easily enough, particularly the EasyLink infotainment screen, which is canted slightly towards the driver for ease of reach and offers limited voice activation for things like simple addresses, phone numbers 
and track selection. As for practicalities, well, our testers had mixed feelings here. As with so many French cars, the glove box is halved in size by an awkwardly shaped fuse box. Some French brand Stellantis Group cars still suffer from this failing too. It really is about time that Gallic makers sorted this issue out. You get a useful bank of connectivity ports in a deep well in front of the gear stick, a 12 volt, an aux in and twin USBs, plus space for a wireless charging mat, but it can't all be shut away with a cover, so you'll need to leave your smartphone powering up in front of prying eyes. Renault's forgotten to fit an overhead sunglasses compartment, and there's no provision for anything like under seat or passenger footwell storage. But on the plus side, the door pockets are of a reasonable size and you get ticket clips in the sun visors, plus covered twin cup holders and a recess for the key card that sits by the electronic handbrake switch, along with a decently sized lidded bin just behind. As for all-round visibility, well, rear three-quarter vision can be occasionally problematic when you're reversing, which won't be good news to buyers of the base Evolution trim level because that's the only one in the range that does without a rear view camera, though all Clios do now get rear parking sensors. Frontwards visibility on this car isn't too bad, despite the rather chunky A pillars, because the screen and the front side windows are quite large, and there's plenty of seat height and steering column adjustability too. OK, let's pull back this disguised C pillar door handle and take a seat in the rear. We weren't especially impressed by the space provided back here when we first tested this Mark V Clio back in 2019, and we're still not, though at least the hybrid system's been packaged in such a way as to not detract further from the knee, leg and head space available. Thanks to these recessed seat backs, one tallish adult can just about sit behind another, but you wouldn't really be wanting to do that for very long, room for knees and legs being at something of a premium. Headroom isn't great either, thanks to the somewhat swept back roof line. As one writer pointed out, overall it's all rather more asterisks than obelix. But does that matter, given that for the majority of buyers, these rear seats will be used only occasionally for adults and more regularly for children? Only you can decide. There are no versatile seat-based gymnastics like you'd get in a rival Honda Jazz, but Renault provides seat back pockets, reasonably sized door bins and overhead reading lights. The transmission tunnel's a little high for a front-driven car, and it would have been nice on the plusher models if Renault had thought to include a USB port in the centre here. You wouldn't expect a central armrest in a car of this class, but as you'd expect, Isofix child seat fastenings feature on the outer two seats. In this top spec Esprit Alpine spec model, there's also some nice trimming to take your mind off the rather compact surroundings. OK, we'll finish with a look at cargo space. Now, the non-hybrid TCE version of this Mark V Clio offers up to 391 litres of boot capacity. A figure here in this electrified model reduced to 301 litres thanks to the battery pack positioned beneath the cargo area floor. Still, that's only three litres less than you'd get in a Honda Jazz, and it's 15 litres more than you'd get from a Toyota Yaris. There's quite a high boot lip to lug your stuff over and you do have to do without an adjustable height boot floor. But four tie down points are provided along with a couple of bag hooks. And at first glance, it seems like there's no space for any kind of spare wheel beneath the boot floor or anything else for that matter. But actually a space saver spare would fit in this hybrid and you can have a full size spare with the TCE version. You will of course have to pay extra in either case though. One day we'll come across a Super Mini fitted with a properly flexible 40-20-40 split backrest, but that day hasn't yet come. So this Clio gets the usual 60-40 split affair, which when pushed forward frees up 1,054 litres of capacity across an almost flat low floor. Once you get your head around the idea of needing a budget of either just below or just over £20,000 for a Super Mini, depending on whether you want this hybrid tech we've been trying here, this Clio really does look quite impressively affordable. From launch and at the time of this test in early 2024, the base conventionally engined TCE90 variant was priced from around £18,000. 
there's quite a significant premium of around three and a half thousand to upgrade yourself to the E-Tech full hybrid version we're trying here, which was priced from around 21,300 as we filmed. Bear in mind that built into the premium you pay for this hybrid version is automatic transmission. The TCE 90 comes only with manual transmission. And for some time, all Clios have only been available with this five door hatch body style. Renault will never offer a three door body shape again and has no plans to offer the estate version you can get in Europe. Whichever engine you choose, there's a choice between three trim levels, base, evolution, mid-range techno, and this top, more sporty looking Esprit Alpine model. We're not focusing on the base TCE90 engine as part of this test, but it's worth knowing that the asking price we just mentioned for this variant as we filmed undercut the segment sales leader Vauxhall's Corsa by around £1,800. This E-Tech full hybrid version looks even better value against obvious full hybrid powered segment rivals. That £21,300 starting figure we mentioned was at the time of filming around £1,300 less than a Toyota Yaris, around £1,600 less than a Vauxhall Corsa hybrid and a huge five grand less than a Honda Jazz. And those savings don't take account of the fact that all of these rivals in their base forms have significantly less power than an E-Tech Clio. And as we film, the more powerful versions of the Corsa and the Yaris that you'd really need to match this Renault's performance were priced respectively from around 26,000 and around 29,000 pounds. If having considered all of this, you find yourself increasingly attracted by what this Renault has to offer, then you'll want to know just how generous the brand has been when it comes to standard equipment. So let's take a look at that now. The fundamentals here don't change with trim. All Clio hybrid variants use the same version of the self-charging 1.6 litre E-Tech petrol slash electric power plant with that auto gearbox I just mentioned and all get eco, my sense and sport driving modes and a range of dashboard e-tools allowing you to get the most from it. All Clios get the same complete level of camera safety provision as well. I'll get on to that. Entry level evolution trim at the foot of the range gives you most of the features you'll really need, including the brand's easy link touchscreen infotainment technology provided via a centrally mounted seven inch display that gives you Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring and a six speaker Archimedes audio system. A further seven inch TFT screen features in the instrument cluster and other evolution spec features include full LED pure vision headlights, power folding mirrors, a Thatcham immobilizer, automatic air conditioning, cruise control with a speed limiter, comfort spec front seats with extra side support and 16 inch Boa Vista alloy wheels. Plus there's dark tinted rear side and tailgate glass, rear parking sensors and keyless key card entry. Need more? Then your next stop is mid-range Techno trim, which builds on Evolution spec with larger 17-inch Monostella diamond-cut alloy wheels and pure vision LED performance headlights with extended wide beam and automatic high and low beam. Plus, you get keyless entry, a reversing camera, a shark fin roof aerial and front parking sensors. Inside, in a Techno model, there's 60% bio-based upholstery, an electric parking brake, an electrochromatic rear view mirror and a wireless phone charger. The E-Tech model gets multi-sense driving modes too, with configurable ambient lighting. As we mentioned earlier, this Esprit Alpine spec level tops the range off. Mildly more dynamic touches include sport style bumpers, 17 inch Esprit Alpine diamond cut alloy wheels, Alpine front wing badges, shadow gray finishing on the lower doors and rear bumper, and a front bumper with a shadow gray F1 blade and a honeycomb lower grill. Plus there's adaptive cruise control with a speed limiter and some extra camera safety features. Inside, the screens are bigger with a 9.3 inch center touchscreen and a 10 inch digital driver's display. You get a frameless rear view mirror, sport aluminum pedals, black seat belts with blue edging, black embossed Jacquard black, dashboard trim, a heated steering wheel 
with blue, white and red top stitching and special black fabric upholstery for the embroidered heated front sport seats which have increased side support. On to options. Now, actually, there are very few. Renault offers various packs, a style pack, a protection pack, a touring pack, and a storage pack. And you can add in a dash cam, a tow bar, and a rack for cycles. You will almost certainly be paying your Renault dealer extra for your choice of paint color, because the only standard shade is solid glacier white. Here, we've got one of the pricey Renault ID metallic shades, iron blue. We would also suggest you consider the optional spare wheel, which is full-sized in the TCE90 and of the Space Saver sort in this hybrid. On to safety features. Now, it almost goes without saying that this car, like others in its segment, achieved a five-star rating in Euro NCAP tests. But that doesn't tell the whole story. To give you just one example, the rival Ford Fiesta, which also achieved a five-star rating, achieved respective adult, child and safety assistance ratings of 87, 84 and 60%, which sounds fairly reasonable until you learn that this Clio's ratings in each of those areas were respectively 96, 89 and 75%. A difference perhaps large enough to be significant, particularly if you'll be using this car for family transport. Part of the reason why this fifth generation Clio model managed to achieve those results lies with its impressive levels of camera safety provision. As you'd expect from a new model in this day and age, autonomous braking is included across the range as standard. This AEBS or Active Emergency Braking System, bolstered by the latest cyclist and pedestrian detection functionality. All Clios also get lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, which work together on the highway to alert you if you're drifting out of your lane. And if you don't respond, we'll apply subtle steering assistance to ease the car back to where it ought to be. As mentioned earlier, the two top models get a headlight auto high beam feature too. Plus, there's also traffic sign recognition, which has over speed prevention and will picture the speed signs as you pass, displaying them on the dash. This top Esprit Alpine version adds rear cross parking alert, which warns you of oncoming traffic when reversing and blind spot warning. Across the Clio range, there's the usual passive safety provision. All models get twin, front, side and curtain airbags, though there's no driver's knee bag, plus the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. Isofix child seat fastenings, tyre pressure monitoring and hill start assist to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions are all additional features that make the team sheet. It's just as well that the electrified elements of this Clio's E-Tech powertrain are so sophisticated because the combustion engine that all of it's mated to isn't. It's a relatively old-fashioned Nissan MPI unit used in models that the Nissan Renault Alliance sells in less advanced Russian and South American markets and it doesn't feature any kind of turbocharger. Still, when mated to all of the hybrid tech we detailed for you in our driving experience section, it can certainly deliver some eye-catching efficiency stats. True, the key figures are some way off what you might expect for a pricier plug-in hybrid, but Renault reckons, and we concur, that they're more realistic than a PHEV model's claimed readings would be. The WLTP figure for combined cycle fuel economy is up to 65.7 mpg and we reckon around 50 to 55 mpg should be regularly achievable without too much trouble. The WLTP CO2 reading is up to 96 grams per kilometre. Renault claims this E-Tech powertrain is 40% more economic than a Clio with a conventional combustion engine, though that isn't necessarily reflected by the figures. The base TCE90 model manages up to 54.3 mpg and up to 118 grams of per kilometre of CO2. Still, this E-Tech model is impressively frugal. To give you a point of comparison, the market super mini sales leader, Vauxhall's Corsa, records up to 57.6 mpg and up to 109 grams per kilometre in conventional, non-electrified 1.2 litre, 98 horsepower Ford. And this Clio hybrid looks good when it comes to benefiting kind taxation exposure with its attractive 24% rating, much better than you'd find with a conventional petrol-engined Super Mini. 
Arguably more relevant is the question of how this Clio Hybrid's figures stack up against its most direct full hybrid super mini segment rivals. The Honda Jazz isn't quite as frugal, managing 61.4 mpg and 105 grams per kilometre. Figures that a Toyota Yaris Hybrid, helped by its lighter curb weight, improves in 114 horsepower form to 68.9 mpg and 99 grams per kilometre. Not quite as sophisticated is the Vauxhall Corsa Hybrid, which manages bests of 62.8 mpg and 102 grams per kilometre of CO2. Overall, as you can tell from these stats, there's not much in it between these four cars. Of course, official figures are one thing, actual day-to-day -day returns are of course quite another, and mindful of this, Renault's provided a variety of e-driving tools to enable Clio hybrid drivers to get as close as possible to the stated readings. As you drive, you'll need to keep a close eye on the right-hand dial, keeping its needle as often as possible in the charge rather than the power section. You'll also want to make use of these two piano key style drive mode buttons below the central screen. Eco uses a more measured mapping of the accelerator pedal and adapted gear changing for the most economical drive. EV, meanwhile, is for slow town traffic, and when activated, it prioritises battery electric drive up to about 27 miles an hour, providing their sufficient charge. Renault reckons that it should be possible for a Clio e-tech owner to drive around town at low speeds in all-electric mode for 80% of the time. On the open road, remember to switch the auto gear lever to its B position so that you can maximise regenerative brake energy harvesting and so preserve battery charge. If you get on top of all that, then you'll want to keep an eye on how efficiently the powertrain's working. And there are display options enabling you to do this on both of the provided TFT monitors. In the instrument binnacle, there's a selectable screen between the two main dials that scrolls between various features. There's an MPG readout, a leaf driving score graphic, and a hybrid drive graphic, which is repeated in a larger display further to the left. Switch your attention to the center dash screen, and in the car info section, you'll find an energy info icon which takes you to a history graph divided into 15, 10 and 5 minute sections showing consumption in MPG and miles per kilowatt hour. There's also a list screen option with additional useful EV readouts for average electric and fuel consumption, distance travelled in electric mode and total recuperated energy. Renault also provides a driving eco section of this centre screen which scores your driving out of five stars based on acceleration and anticipation and rather cringily gives you a little virtual trophy graphic when you drive particularly economically. There's also a coaching section giving efficiency driving advice in three categories, general, anticipation and acceleration. To be honest, most of the tips are pretty self-evident. Renault keeps changing its warranty packages and not for the better. At the time of this test, all the company's models were covered by an unremarkable three-year, 60,000-mile package, a little worse than a Honda Jazz, and way off the cover that Toyota provides to Yaris customers up to 10 years, as long as you persist with franchised dealer servicing. You get three years of UK emergency breakdown recovery, and three years worth of European cover as part of this package. There's also an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty for the traction battery. Insurance for all Clio hybrid variants is rated at group 15E. It's 10E or 11E for the TCE version. On all Clios, scheduled servicing is every 12 months or 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. As usual, prepaid servicing plans are available, a three-year 30,000-mile deal or a 40,000-mile package. Finally, residual value, the experts at CAP reckon 43% after three years. Renault's Clio is one of the last super mini model lines you might expect to fall in the face of the ongoing EV revolution. But then we thought that about the Fiesta, yet historical popularity wasn't enough to save it. The Clio, though, looks like it'll be with us for a few years yet, partly due to the likelihood that a full EV switch is going to take longer than anticipated. 
and partly because of Renault's foresight in giving its Super Mini this impressively frugal take on combustionized electrification. We're disappointed that this revitalized fifth generation Clio hasn't received the brand's more modern three cylinder based 1.2 litre e tech hybrid unit. But the continuing four cylinder 1.6 litre e tech full hybrid powertrain is still an impressively frugal device and just about worth its considerable price premium over the continuing conventionally powered TCE 90 version of this model. In concert with this car's now sharper look and smarter cabin, this hybrid powertrain creates a product that looks a good fit for a super mini customer wanting electrification, but undecided about just how much of it they need. The efficiency figures are impressive, and in its humbler forms, this French super mini is a little more affordable than its direct segment rivals. Overall, you could either see a Clio hybrid as a small car with needlessly expensive technology, or wonder who wouldn't want a small economical hatch borrowing its transmission and motor technology from the most up-to-the-minute thinking in F1. One writer described this Clio hybrid as the Pepsi Max option in the Clio range, in some ways a compromise solution, but one that still leaves a decent taste in the mouth and is better for us in the long run. Something in that. So in summary, well, the Clio may no longer be affordable enough to be the ordinary person's choice in this class, but the thinking man's choice in this segment, well, you could certainly make a case for it.